Give him some glory, some honor, and some praise. He deserves to be glorified. He deserves to be magnified. He deserves to be edified. He deserves to be exalted. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is Jehovah Esai. He is El Shaddai. He is Elohim. He is Yahweh. He's Alpha Omega, the first, the last, the beginning, and the end. And for that we bless him. For that we adore him. For that we esteem him. He is worthy to be praised today. He is worthy to be glorified. Truly, he is worthy to be magnified. He is worthy to be exalted. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. So we bless the name of Jesus Christ. Truly, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, Jesus deserves all the glory. Jesus deserves all the honor. Jesus deserves all the praise. So we just bless and adore and esteem him now. He told all us, Father, as we come, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. We just bless you for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. For you're worthy to be praised. Father, you're worthy to be glorified. You're worthy to be magnified. And Heavenly Father, you're worthy to be exalted. So we bless your name now. We adore your name now. We esteem your name now. For you are worthy to be praised. Even as we enter your presence now, we repent of all sin and all iniquity, all ungodliness and all unholiness. We ask you right now, Father, to shift our hearts. Uh, shift our minds, uh, put us in unity and put us in one accord. Uh, Father, that you're glorified, that you're edified, and that you're exalted. Uh, we ask it now in Jesus' mighty name. Uh, amen and amen. Now, Father, we bind Satan and every spirit of the enemy that we're trying to come against your word today. We bind them by the power and the authority given uh, in Jesus' mighty name. Uh, amen and amen. You may be seated. Well, well, stand just a minute for the reading of the word, and then you can be seated. Isaiah 51. I'm going to read just a couple of verses for you. And it reads as following, Isaiah chapter 51, look at it, verse number 1. It says, Talking to me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord, look unto the rock where ye are heen, and to the hole of the pit where ye are digged. Look unto Abraham, your father, and unto Sarah that bear you. For I called him alone, and blessed him, and increased him. For the Lord shall comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places. And he will make her wilderness like Eden. And her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness shall be found therein. Thanksgiving and the voice of melody. Hold unto me, my people. Give ear unto me, O my nations. For a law shall proceed from me. And I will make the judgment to rest for the light of the people. My righteousness is near. My salvation is gone forth. Mine arm shall judge the people. The isles shall wait unto me, or upon me. And on mine arm shall they what? Shall they trust? I want to drop down just a couple of verses. Because this is what I really want to, want to deal with. Just give me just a moment to drop down a few verses here. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Verse number 17 says, Awake, awake, stand up, O Jerusalem, which hath drunken at the hand of the Lord the cup of his fury. And thou hast drunken the dreads of the cup of trembling and worn out or warn them out. Now, I want to stop right there because what I want to deal with is hawking and awake. You can be seated. But for those of you who are taking, taking notes, hawking unto me, awaken unto me. And what in this particular passage of scripture, the prophet Isaiah begins to decree, he begins to release the word of the Lord. And as he begins to release this word, the first thing he says is God wants you and I as sons and daughters of the kingdom to listen to him. 
We're living in the day, we're living now, we're living in the time where it's vitally important that we're attentive to the voice of the Lord, that we're attentive to what God is saying and speaking in this hour and in this season. It's vitally important that we realize that God is doing a new thing, but not only that, he wants our attention. That word hawking, it simply means listen, pay attention. Now, we don't listen just with our ears in this season, but we're in a season now where we got to listen to the voice of God in our spirit, the Holy Spirit, because it is the spirit that God is speaking to now. So our spirit must be in tune with the Holy Spirit. Our spirit must be in tune with what the Heavenly Father is releasing in this hour and in this season right now. There are many believers who are missing the voice of God right now because they're listening with the carnal mindset and not with their spirit. They're really Listening with that uh, 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 tra traditional or religious mindset and not with the spirit. What spirit? Um, your spirit, the, the very core of the character of who you are that connects you back to the Father. The, the Lord is saying in this season and in this hour, I need your undivided attention. I was listening to a young lady. And she was talking and she was saying how I can't rest at night. I can't sleep at night. I don't rest. I don't sleep. And, and, and she, was, she, was, she was releasing this. And as she was speaking this, God began to deal with me about why people are not able to sleep. And see, what a lot of folks fail to realize is God wants to awaken you, but he's not awakening you. He's trying to awake your spirit, Amen. the spirit of who you are. In other words, the spirit of who they are or who we are as sons and daughters in the kingdom is sleeping now. And God is saying, I'm waking you up physically because I need to speak into your spirit. Amen. This is the reason we've got to listen and be hawking, hawking into the voice of the Lord. When we listen to him, he begins to speak audibly through the Holy Spirit. Amen. He begins to release a measure of the anointing, and that measure begins to hover upon us. Now, guess this now. When the anointing begins to saturate you, and you're still, and you begin to listen to the voice of God, then God can begin to speak. One of the things you've got to understand about the anointed is when the anointed comes and fills the atmosphere, every demonic force, every principality of darkness, every yoke of Satan at that time is fleed. The reason is because of the presence of God and because of the fire of the Holy Ghost. So when the anointing begins to rest on you, begins to hover on you, every spirit that's contrary, every anti-Christ spirit that's in your presence, every demonic force, every attack of the enemy that's rising against you at that given moment has to flee. Why? Because the presence of God is at hand. In other words, Jesus said that the, 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 the presence of God is what? At hand. Now, and I'm just paraphrasing that. Let's read verse number one. It says, Hearken unto me. Ye that follow after righteousness. Now, God is not talking to the world. He's not talking to the ungodly. He's not talking to the sinner. But he's talking to the body of Christ. This is the reason there's a shakening going on right now. Because God wants the body of Christ to understand, I'm trying to speak to you, and I'm trying to delay a message to you. Yes, I was listening to someone, and they were saying, Jesus is coming. He is coming. But right now, he's trying to get our attention so that he can begin to pour in our hearts and in our spirits the next moves of the kingdom. Even in the paradigm shifts of God, even in the attacks of the enemy coming from in the airway, God is trying to shake and awaken us to equip us and to empower us with what we need to defeat the adversary. But if we are sleeping, not physically, but slumbering in our spirit, we won't receive the impartations. We won't receive the activations. In other words, there are measures of kingdom that God wants to put in the body of Christ, but if we're not positioned to receive it, it just goes over us. When we miss it and we say, well, I don't understand what's really going on. What's really going on is not about your situation right now. It's not about your circumstance right now. But what God is doing is he's already told us in, in, in Matthew 6 and 33 that I'll take care of your situation. I'll take care of your circumstance. He tells us in the end of that verse, he said, I clothe the grass of the field. Are you not more, worth much more in the lilies of the field? And I'm paraphrasing. In other words, God says, I don't want you worried about what you're going through. I want you paying attention to what I'm doing right now. Because I'm bringing a shift right now. I'm bringing an increase right now. I'm pouring out greater measures of my fire right now. I'm pouring out greater measures of my anointing right now. I'm pouring out greater measures of my Holy Spirit. I'm giving you strategies and I'm giving you access in the spirit realm to begin to move and to maneuver in the spirit. 
This is what's going on right now. But many believers are missing what's really happening because they're focused on what they're going through. They're focused on what they're experiencing. They're focusing on what they're suffering. God is going to heal our hearts. He's going to heal our spirits. He's going to bring us out of a place of suffering if we shift our hearts and our minds and put them on him. He said in the word, I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. So we're living in the day and the hour now where we've got to keep our mind. How do we keep our mind on Christ? Through the word. He said, let this mind be in you that's also in Christ Jesus. So Jesus had the mind of the Father. But where did he get the mind of the Father from? He got the mind of the Father out of this book, the Holy Spirit. Not only that, but he was God himself manifested in the flesh. So he was walking in a, 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 a season of divine purpose, a season of divine order. You and I, as sons and daughters in the kingdom, we're walking in the divine timing and the divine will and purpose of God. But we've got to understand that. We've got to realize that God is bringing the body of Christ into a place today where he is in complete control. Man may think they're controlling, but God is getting ready to flip the, flip the strip. Let me say that again. God is getting ready to flip the strip. Those people who think they're in control, those people who think that they're controlling everything, I've got news for you. God is getting ready to strip you of your control. Amen. He's getting ready to take control from you because he is in absolute control. Amen. The cow on a thousand hills belong to him. The people of his, he said, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. He's getting ready to strip the ship on those, the strip on those who are whispering in the ears of people. He's beginning to deal with the hearts of the saints, beginning to deal with the hearts of those who will surrender their voice and hear him and obey what he's saying in this season. Your blessing, your increase is in your obedience. It's in you surrendering your voice and obeying the voice and doing what God is instructing in this hour. Your abundance is in your obedience. Remember, Abraham was blessed by God because he obeyed God. Remember, Isaac and Jacob were blessed by God because what they obeyed the voice of God. See, our blessings are conditional. The prophetic word is conditional. Even though you receive the word of the Lord, that word will only manifest if you obey the voice of God. See, that's why the Bible says the prophetic word is subject to the prophet. Which means when the prophet speaks that word, subject simply means to obey. It means to surrender. It means to yield. So when the prophet decrees and declares and proclamates the gospel of the kingdom, that word is subject to his laws. So he says, God is going to bless you. Guess what? That word has to go and get that blessing and bring it back to you. Guess why? Because guess what? That word is subject to the woman of God. That word is subject to the man of God. But remember this. That word is subject to heaven. Because God says, my word will do that thing that I've said it to, and it will not come back to me forward. In other words, it has a mission. It has an assignment. And if we position ourselves, it will do exactly what our God ordained and purposed for. So you see in this first verse, first paragraph, God is not talking to the world, but he's talking to the body of Christ. He's not talking to religion. He's not talking to tradition. But he's talking to kingdom-minded folk who will surrender their voice and surrender their will and listen to him. Look what he says. How better to me ye that follow. Notice, you can't lead God. Notice, you can't lead righteousness and holiness. He says, ye that follow after righteousness, see, you've got to follow Christ. You've got to follow holiness. You've got to follow righteousness. That doesn't mean you're going to dot every eye. That doesn't mean you're going to cross every T. That doesn't mean you're not going to falter or fall by the wayside. It doesn't mean you're not going to commit a sin here or a sin there. But continue to strive. Continue to follow. Confess. Repent. And move forward and watch God begin to bring change in your life. Notice what he says in the next verse. Ye that seek the Lord. Now notice he says. He didn't say those of you that know the Lord. He said those of you who seek. That means I'm looking for him. That means I'm searching for him. That means I desire a relationship with him. He says, those of you who are seeking me, those are the ones that I am talking to right now. See, this is what this is what um, um, the, uh, uh, Isaiah is simply saying in this verse. He says, let's seek the Lord. Now, catch this now. He says, look unto the rock from where it's your heen and the hole of the pit from which ye are deemed. Now, guess this now. In this particular verse, he simply says, now, look into the rock from where you're heen. Well, we are heen from the Father. The hole of the pit. Now, when he, when he talks about the hole of the pit, that I don't know if many of you are familiar with a quarry, or the word quarry. 
But quarry simply means a humongous rock. And most of the time when you find a quarry and a humongous rock, you'll find that it's in, ba in a base in water. In other words, it's, it's, it's a part of the mountains. So he says, out of the quarry, or in this particular passage, out of the rock from which you're heen. So you got to remember this. We are heen from, from Jesus Christ. Jesus told Peter, he says, upon this rock I build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against the Christians now. But then the Holy Spirit lives inside you and I. Jesus Christ is what? He lives inside you and I. So see, even though we were taken from God, we have come, we've come out of the will or out of, out, of, out of heaven. In other words, God molded and he shaped us to be the sons and the daughters that he's called us to. But in the process, we are shapen by the word of God. We're shapen through the Holy Ghost. We're shapen through our relationship with Jesus Christ, is our Lord and Savior. Our lives are surrendered for purpose and destiny. In other words, what God has called us to. In other words, what God has ordained our lives to, our lives are purpose for his will. So it says, out of the rock from where is your healing, that is Jesus Christ. That is the Heavenly Father. That is the kingdom of God. This is where we were here. This is where we were taken from. In other words, when we were born, we came through the birth canal as sinners, shaped in the sin of Adam and Eve. But when Jesus steps through 42 generations and comes on the scene, he and dies and rises again, all of that is obliterated. All of that is canceled. That assignment of the enemy is now stripped. Satan is stripped of his power. He's stripped of his authority because now Jesus has stepped on the scene. Now we can go back to the rock. We can go back to salvation. We can go back to Jesus Christ. So everything that's been holding us can no longer hold us now. Amen. Because of the fact that we've been delivered. We've been set free through Jesus Christ and his resurrection. And him getting up out of the grave with all power and with all authority. Now look at the next part of this verse. He says, out of the hole of the pit from which you did. Look at verse number two. He says, look unto Abraham, your father. Then he says in the next verse, and unto Sarah that bare you. For I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. Now notice this. God says, because you listen to me, because you seek me, because you obey me. See, Abraham obeyed God. He says, now, he says, because of all the obedience and Sarah who bear the son. Now, notice what? Now, notice this. He says, now, he says, God says, I called him. He spoke to him. The Bible says, many are called, but few are what? Chosen. And the reason is because they won't obey the voice of God. The reason is because they're not willing to pay the price. The reason is because they're not willing to go through. Whatever God has purpose in our day and life. And let me tell you something. Greatness comes because you're willing to pay the price. A lot of people are not willing to pay the price. It doesn't matter whether you're a great artist. It doesn't matter whether you're a great musician. It doesn't matter whether you're a great uh, 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 famous this person or famous that person. Let me tell you something. Famous basketball player, famous football player. Greatness comes because you're willing to pay the price. Success comes because you're willing to pay the price. Wealth and riches come because you're willing to pay the price. A lot of people say, I don't understand what you're saying. Well, it's simple. People who are successful, they are diligent. They're persistent. They are continuous. They don't stop because of a little situation or circumstance. They strive and they perfect what they want to do until they become a professional. Michael Jordan was a professional because he practiced and practiced and practiced and practiced. Tiger Woods is a professional because he practiced and practiced and practiced. See, greatness comes, but there's a price that comes with greatness. So, so people in the church, they want greatness, but they don't want to pay the price. They, want to, they don't want to stay. They don't want to get in the world. They don't want to go through trials and tribulations. They don't want to go through the process. They don't want to be equipped. They don't want to be prepared. But successful people do what is necessary. Let me tell you something. Anything worth having, or any time you desire to be great, you're going to pay a price for it. With the anointing comes a price. And we've got to be willing to pay that price. And a lot of believers want power and they want authority. Well, let me tell you something. The anointing comes with power. The anointing comes with authority. And you're going to pay the price in order to walk in this measure of kingdom. You're going to die to your flesh. And let me tell you something. These guys that I named that became successful, they had to die to their will. They had to generate, in other words, they had to come up with a strategy. Let me tell you something. Uh, what writer says, if you do something enough times, 
you it will become automatic. In many cases, 30 days. In other words, let's say you go to work late every day, but you set your clock an hour early, and you start getting up an hour earlier than you normally do, and you leave home just like you normally would, but the only difference is you're doing it an hour earlier. Don't you know you'll never be late again? Because guess what? You're leaving home a whole hour in time to get started. So guess what? You have reprogrammed your mind and reconditioned your mind to embrace change. Let me tell you something. When success and greatness comes, it requires change. It requires doing something that you're not used to doing. It requires doing something that is not automatic. In other words, you've got to do it until it becomes automatic. You want, to be, you want to be skilled in the Word of God. you got to read that Word. you got to search the Scriptures. you got to do what is necessary. And let me tell you something. The more the Word of God you read, the more God begins to empower you. The more He begins to anoint you. The more He begins to appoint you. He positions you to move in greater power and greater authority. Don't you know we're living in the day and in the hour when the glory of God is falling into the atmosphere? But we still have to qualify. He said, whom I call, I also qualify. That's me, you, and you. He qualified each and every one of us. Those of you doing it out. He qualified us through process. In, in, in other words, if we're not qualified, there's no approval. As I say many times, in, in school, you've got to go through grade school in order to go to college. And I was talking to a young lady last Sunday, uh, last week out of church, talking to a young lady, and, and she was having problems with her grades. And I asked her about her grades, and I said, what, 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 what studies are you taking in school right now? In other words, are you taking the basic classes, or are you in the upper level classes? Because, see, if you're not in the upper level classes, even though you're planning to go to school or planning to go to college, you won't be ready when it's time to go. Because you're taking the basic, easy stuff. Huh? But see, in order to excel into a greater position, in order to excel into that mindset of, of college status, you've got to take harder courses, you've got to take harder classes, and you've got to make a high score on the SAT. Amen. Because see, if you're not qualified in those remnants, in those areas, they're going to say, you've got to go back to school, and you've got to study this, and you've got to study that, and you've got to study that. It works the same way with God. See, demon slayers are demon slayers because they've studied demonic attacks. They've studied demonic forces. They understand how a demon work in the airway. See, they are qualified because they're prepared to go into the next mansion. But see, a man of God, a woman of God that haven't studied demons, that haven't studied the world, that haven't seen God for greater power, for greater authority in the anointed, when they stand before the giant or demon, he slays them. Because they don't understand greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Him being the Holy Ghost, him being Jesus Christ, and him being the Heavenly Father. The kingdom of God is on the inside. And as a result of his kingdom being inside, he's greater. No match for, in other words, there's nothing that compares, there's nothing that can match the power and the authority that comes through Jesus Christ. But we've got to be positioned to receive it. Let me get back into the word. I think I got too far out there. Now listen. It's important that you realize in verse number 2 in Isaiah 51, it says, see, God's talking to the body of Christ. The church wants to be blessed. They want to be healed. They want to be delivered, and they want to be set free. But it comes with surrendering. It comes with listening. It comes with yielding your will and allowing the will of God to begin to come forth. And when you do this, manifestation of purpose and destiny begins to come forth. Because guess what? There is an alignment, but then there is a realignment. In other words, God realigns your life for his will. See, in the apostolic, in, in the apostolic see, there's alignment, but then we get off course. That's why God says, I go ahead of you, and I make the cricket places what? Straight. So when you've gotten off course, God can bring you back in line. He can reposition you and then advance you forward. He can accelerate you forward because now you understand that I've got to follow Christ. I've got to follow God. I've got to do it his way, not my way. Now look at this next verse. In that verse, in, in verse number uh, 2 in Isaiah 51. It says, look unto Abraham. Now God blessed Abraham. He increased Abraham. But Abraham was blessed because he obeyed the voice of God. Amen. And what God told Abraham, he said, get away from your kindred. In other words, your blessing can be hindered because of your association. What God has in store for you can be hindered because of who you choose to associate with. 
In other words, if they're not entitled to the blessing, you can't receive it until there's a separation. In other words, you can't get it until God moved that individual or those individuals out of your life. And when God moved it out of your life, you position yourself to begin to hear his voice. That's the reason it's important that we're tending to the voice of God. Now notice, Abraham was blessed. He obeyed the voice of God. And unto Salem, that bear, the, bear you, he says, for I called him, guess what God says, I called him alone. That meant when I called him, I didn't tell him to hook up with Sally. I didn't tell him to hook up with Sue. Many believers right now are in trouble with God because they hooked up with all these people that God has not told them to hook up with. And they're wondering why the ministry is not working. They're wondering why things are not going the way they should go. They're wondering why I don't feel the anointing no more. I don't feel the power of God no more. The reason is because you've hooked up with Satan. You've hooked up with the devil. You've hooked up with demonic forces. And you're still expecting God to move miraculously. It won't work. Uh, 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 uh. It cannot work. Why? Because God has a greater plan. God has a better plan. He called Abraham alone. He separated him because he had a plan just for his life. God will separate you when he's getting ready to take you into a place of greatness. He'll separate you. He'll pull forth from around you. There will be a hindrance. And, and he'll, he'll position you and he'll pull on you and he'll strengthen you and he'll justify his reasoning for doing what he's doing. But it comes by and by. You say, Lord, I don't understand why all the people walked away. I don't understand why I'm experiencing this. I don't understand why I'm that. I know I sinned. I know I did that. But God, it, that it, it was really that bad. No, it wasn't that bad. God says, I allowed this to happen now so I can read position you so I can take you into promise, so I can take you into destiny, so I can take you into that place that I'm ordained and purpose your life to. He said, I allowed it to happen to separate so people wouldn't see the God in you, but they would see the sin. And when they see the sin in the iniquity, they'll walk away from the God inside of you, and they'll embrace those and think that because you are imperfect, and God says, I'll make you perfect. I'll, I, I, I won't let your name be ashamed, but I'll carry you into this. I'll show you so high above the heavens, and I'll show you with the eagles and the giants in the kingdom, not in the world. But in the kingdom, because see, when you start walking in kingdom measures and kingdom power and kingdom authority, when you start walking in this realm, the glory of God begins to fall upon you. The anointing of God is there all over everywhere when you go. Why? Because you've shifted now. You're not the person you once was. Because guess what? when God separated Abraham, he changed him. Now, Abraham still disobeyed God. Because when he left, he took his son, his brother, son, Lot with him. So he hadn't really obeyed the voice of God. So the fullness of the blessing couldn't really come because there was a hindrance. Let me tell you something. When people are not in agreement, confusion comes. And I don't care how bad and how hard you work, when two people come in unity and on one accord, there will always be confusion. Amen. The Bible says there was an uproar with Abraham and, and Lot's our, our, our workers and servants. And the Bible says that God told Abraham, Lot has got to go. Because, see, he's hindering my will. A lot of folks have hooked up with people, and God's telling you, get away from them. He's telling you, move away from this, because this is not included in my plan for your life. This is not included in, in where I'm carrying you. In other words, you've got to walk alone sometimes in order to obtain what God is ordained and calling your life to. Many people say, well, Lord, I'm fearful, I'm afraid. Let me tell you something. You've got to stand all by yourself, because if you can't stand alone, how can you expect to stand with the people of God? And then see, God will bring you to that test where you will stand all by yourself. But when you stand and when you say, oh, Lord, you, it, it must be over now, and you turn and go another way, God says, no, 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 don't quit. Don't stop. Don't give up. I, I'm still here with you. I haven't left you. I haven't, I haven't forsaken you. I kept my word. I'm just strengthening you. I'm just molding you. I'm just shaping you. But Abraham had to, had to, had to move with God all by himself. Lot had to leave. So he told Lot, he said, choose what land you want and take that land. And Lot chose one session and Abraham chose. See, God still had to bring total separation. For some of you, God is going to bring total separation. He's going to separate everything and everybody. And those people you thought were your friend are going to look you in your face and turn their back and walk away from you. And you're going to be broken hearted, busted and disgusted. And you're not going to understand why. It's all God. It's all the Father. But you've got to position yourself to embrace that change. In other words, God says, I'll, 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 I'll prepare your heart 
And I'm not talking about that piece of meat that be in your spirit. But I'm talking about the spirit of who you are that's connected to Jesus Christ. God said, I'll prepare you, and then I will allow you to walk in a place you never knew. Because when he sent to Abraham, he sent him when he sent him out. The Bible says that when he sent him forth, he sent him alone. He sent them by himself. But like I said, he chose his own people. He chose who he wanted to take. Sometimes the folk we choose ain't the folk God won't walk in with us. Right. Remember, Jesus chose 12. And the 12 he chose, one of them still was not permitted to walk with him. Now, the fact, he betrayed him. He began to go behind Jesus' back and set up camp. He betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. That's why the number 30 is the number of betrayal. I remember my mentor, if you gave my mentor $30, he said, add a dollar to it or take a dollar away from it. <laughs> he wouldn't receive it because he knew the number was the number of betrayal. So he wouldn't accept $30, give me 31 or give me 29, but I don't want 30. So see, you got to remember, saints, you have to understand when you're working with God. And sometimes you try to figure out, what, well, I don't understand why, I'm not, why it's not happening. It's going to happen. Seem like it's taking forever. It's going to happen so fast. So you're going to be like, Lord, I went to sleep last night and woke up and I woke up in heaven. Why? Because see, God says, I, 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 I've got you in a place. See, there comes a time, the Lord, you know, back in the old days, Grandma would take the flour. And when she's baking the cake, she'd take that flour and she'd put it in a strainer. And when she put that flour in a strainer, she'd begin to turn that strainer. And everything that wasn't pure stayed and remained in the strainer. Just sits down. So all them folk around you that's not really pure, God said to put them in a strainer. And when you get through straining that strainer, you're going to find out everything that ain't pure will be walking with you. Because you're going to be light. The burdens are going to be lifted. You're going to be light. The weights are going to be lifted. You're going to be light. Everything that's holding you is going to be lifted. Why? Because God says, I'm going to put it in the strainer. So all those old dead weights you've been carrying, all those old spirits you've been battling with, fighting and tossing and, and turning around with. God says, I'm moving them out of my way. They're not in your way, they're in my way. They're not, they're not, they're not hindering you, they're hindering what I've ordained and purpose your life to. Excuse me, the anointed can't come without wanting to come because they're in the way. God says, I'm gonna, I'm gonna clear the path. Everything in my way, I'm gonna move it out of the way so that you can enter into the promise that I purpose and ordain your life to. So that you can enter into the plan that I've called you to, because I have a purpose for you, and it's a good purpose. He said it, he said it in uh, uh, Isaiah, Jeremiah uh, 29, 11, for, the, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. So God says, what I've ordained and what I purpose in life to, I know what it is. You're the one that's got to seek me until you find it. you got to seek me until I lead you to it. You say, well, I've been getting this prophetic word, I've been getting that prophetic word. You might be walking in your season. But are you obeying God in your season? Don't miss your season because of disobedience. Don't miss your season because you refuse to obey the voice of God. Don't miss your season because you're listening to the wrong people. Don't miss your season because you're afraid to walk by yourself. Don't miss your season because you're afraid of what the people are going to say. you got to walk by yourself in order to move in the rhythm of kingdom that God is ordaining and calling your life to. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I know you're hearing this word. And if you're not hearing it now, you're going to hear the recording because I'm going to post it when I'm done. Because God is speaking to the body of Christ. He's speaking to the believer. He's letting them know what I'm trying to do in your life is different. What I'm trying to do in your life is a new thing. What I'm trying to do in your life is bring you into a place of power and greater authority to cast down demons, to break strongholds, to break yokes over the people in the minds of the people. I'm trying to bring you into a place where the supernatural can come forth like never before, where my glory can fill the atmosphere, the fire of God can consume every storm every principality and every demon. Yes. Hallelujah. This is what he's doing. But the church full of stuff on his knee. I'm going through a trial. I'm going through a tribulation. I'm going through a heartache. I'm going through a pain. And the pastors are lining up with them. It's in a decree and declaring the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It's in a decree and declaring that God is going to work out your situation. All you got to do is put your faith, your trust and your confidence in him. Don't worry about what's happening in your life. Just put your faith in God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Preachers are lining up with the people instead of listening to the voice of God in this season. And they're going to miss what he's doing in this hour. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. 
Because they're, they're, they're so busy trying to be famous now. They're so busy trying to be stars now. The Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. When Jesus is in you, he'll do great things. He'll do supernatural things. He'll do unimaginable things. If you keep your faith and your trust totally in him, he'll do the impossible. Because all things are possible with God to him that believe. The Bible says, he that comes to God must believe that he is. That he is a reward to them that gives that they seek him. Who are you seeking? Are you seeking Jesus or are you seeking your friends? Are you seeking Jesus or are you seeking man? Are you seeking the Father or are you seeking your friends? We're living in that day and hour where we got to surrender our will totally. Not, not excuse me, not partially, but totally surrender. Totally yield. If the word don't convict, if the word don't beat, if the word don't bring you into a place of conviction, it's not doing what it's supposed to do. But when the word convicts your heart and causes you to line up with the will of God and you repent and yield, watch what God will do. He'll amaze you. He'll flabbergast you. That's why Barack Obama said he'll bamboozle you. He'll catch you totally by surprise. You'll be like, good God Almighty, look at God. And guess what? He'll be getting all the glory. He'll be getting all the honor. And man can't say, I did, 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 that, did, that. You didn't do nothing. God did it all. God is the one getting the glory. See, that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to bring separation. Excuse me, so he can bring importation. He's trying to bring separation so he can shift you and bring you into a greater measure. Did I get through verse 2 yet? There's so much food in verse number 2. He says, and Sarah. Now, notice what he says. He says, so I called him alone. Now, notice what God says next. He says, I called him alone and blessed. I favored him. That's what God said. I favored him. In other words, Abraham was favored. Isaac and Jacob was favored. Jeremiah was favored. Job was favored. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were favored by God. They went through trials. Daniel was favored. Joseph was favored. Moses was favored. They were favored by God. I know it was favored. They were favored by God because God, Jeremiah was favored. They were favored by God because God had a purpose. He had a plan for their life. Even though the enemy tried to interfere. They heard the voice of God and they moved out in faith and trust. Excuse me. I know it's going to run, but that's okay. We're going to preach this word. Amen. God is getting the glory. Yes. See, God blessed him when he obeyed him. Mm -hmm. Many people are looking for the blessing, but they don't want to obey. Mm -hmm. They're looking for the increase, but they don't want to be obedient. Mm -hmm. They're looking for God to move miraculously, but they don't want to obey the laws of God. Oh my God. Yes. They, they, in other words, they're like children that's looking for an inheritance that they're not entitled to. See, we're heirs and we're joining heirs, but we're joining us with Jesus Christ. Amen. So if you can't follow, how can you lead? See, that, that, that's, the, that's the key, is being willing to stay humble, yes. being willing to stay meek. A lot of folks say, you did this and you did that, I can't do this, I can't do it. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Remember your sin? Have you forgotten about that? Remember when you fought and fell by the wayside and you said, oh, God, please forgive me? And God forgive you and put you back on the pedestal. But now in your heart, you don't want to forgive nobody else. God says, I'm going to spake your backside. And I'm going to bring you back in line with my will. Look at what he says. He blessed him. Now notice, when God blessed him, he not just, now guess this, God didn't just bless Abraham with things. But he blessed him with people. He said, your seed should be as the grain of sand in the sea. Unnumerable. See, see, when God bless you, he bless you abundantly. A lot of people say, Apostle, you always write about blessings and, and you always write about abundance and favor. You know why? Because we serve the God of much. Yes. We serve the God of increase. Don't let nobody get on you or try to convince you that you shouldn't write and encourage God's people to believe that God will bless them. Rebuke that spirit. Amen. That spirit that wants you to think that Jesus was in poverty, that Jesus was poor. Rebuke that spirit. Amen. That is not the spirit of Christ. That's the spirit of religion and tradition. Our God is a rich God. He said, the cattle on a thousand hills belong to me. 
He said, we're the heirs, and we're joined here. So whatever belongs to Jesus Christ, I can go and I can plead to the Father, and the angels will, the, the Holy Spirit will go back to God, and he will get what is rightfully mine, and he'll bring it to me. All I've got to do is embrace it. Excuse me. All I've got to do is receive it. See, God wants to bless. That's why he's saying, hearken to me. If you just listen to me, you will walk in your promise. If you just listen to me, you will walk in purpose. If you just listen to me, you will walk in destiny. Don't be one of those that 20 years from now say, I wish I had listened to God. Or I wish I had listened to the man and the woman of God as they released what the Holy Spirit was releasing to me. Because see, God speaks to people. Amen. And God will use people to warn you. You can ignore it, but it don't mean it won't manifest. Amen. You can act like God ain't spoke, but it don't mean it won't manifest. Because when the man of God or the woman of God that is talking directly from the throne of God opened their mouth, you can take it to the bank. It's coming into manifestation whether you like it or not. When the man of God and the woman of God decree and proclamate what the Holy Spirit is saying to the body of Christ, guess what? He's coming into manifestation whether you like it or not. Because the man and the woman of God is not talking, but God is speaking through them. Yes. The throne of God, the kingdom of God, God is releasing his word through them. And when he speaks through them, he's decreeing, he's declaring what I am about to do. Amen. And if you stand back, you watch, you'll see it manifest. This is why it's important, saints, that we obey the voice of God. This is why in this season we got to hear God. Amen. See, God is preparing the body of Christ for the next five years. We're in year number one. 2020 was the way God. 2020 was the drawing us together. 2020 was the putting us along, bringing separation. He did us just like he did Abraham. He separated us. Those that would obey his voice and close the church doors, he separated us. He draws us unto himself so he can pull in our spirits, so he can shift us and empower us and anoint us to go to the next place in him. He, brought, he draws us unto himself so he can speak directly in our spirit, just like he called Abraham alone. He told Abraham what he had for him, Amen. but it was with condition. Yeah. So you got to remember, when God tells you I've got something in store for you, it's always with condition. Amen. And a lot of folk want God, but they don't. they want the stuff, but they don't want God. They want Jesus, but they don't want power. Religion and tradition want healing, but they don't want Jesus, and they don't want power. You say hallelujah, they say, well, we don't say that in here. How are you, you going to get Jesus? It's a, it's a package deal. You can have Jesus without the Holy Spirit. You can have the Holy Spirit without the Father. You can have none of them without the Trinity, but they're all one. So how, how, how are you going to stop one? reject one and expect to get all the other. God says, oh, this is a package deal. When you meet a woman with children and you marry her, you marry her life. You marry her past, her present, and her future. Same way with a man. You meet one with children, you marry their past, their present, and their future. When you embrace them, you embrace all that comes. Guess what? There are many surprises. Because there are a whole lot of things they ain't told you about that's just going to show up. But guess what? you got to love them beyond their past. You got to love them beyond their mistakes and their errors. You got to love them beyond the things that took place at that time. In other words, the same way God gave you an opportunity, you got to give them one if you say you love them. Because guess what? Love, true love, is unconditional. Amen. And I don't care what nobody say. A real friend will never walk away from you. Amen. They will always be there. I've got a friend that I've known for years. I met in 1984. I can pick up my phone and call her right now. Got another friend I've known for years. Met her, met her in 1985. Pick up my phone and call them. See, people say they're your friend. No, they're not. Amen. No, they're not. They're telling a lie. And then they, and then they try to say, God said, I told you that I can't speak to you. I can't deal. That ain't God. That's a spirit. Amen. God is bringing the body of Christ together. He's not separating the body of Christ. Amen. That's a spirit in operation, trying to convince you to pull away from power, trying to convince you to pull away from authority, trying to convince you to pull away from the anointing, trying to convince you to pull away so that you end up with a fake instead of the real thing. I'm going to tell her like it is whether you like it or not. For so in this church, they walked out. They walked out from power. They walked out from authority. And they went someplace, and now they're regretting it. Because they disobeyed the voice of God. God spoke to me. He told me who he told to leave. Don't thank the man of God. Don't hear the voice of God. Some of you passing judgment, then don't worry. You're going to be judged also. Because God said, when you pass judgment, I will judge you. So we better get it together. We better repent and we better fall in line. Amen. And I'm talking to the entire body of Christ. Thank you, Jesus. 
I'm talking to the real believer. Yes. Stop being the judge and the jury and obey the voice of God and walk in unconditional love. Walk as God ordained us to walk. Love regardless of what happened. God love regardless of what took place. God don't break separation. That's the work of the enemy. He said we must be in unity. We must be on one accord. These preachers preaching that, that damn the lie. That's what it is. It's a damn the lie. God is pulling the body across the board, pulling them, sending them separate ways. No, no, God is bringing his body together. He's not pulling us apart. He's not separating us for, for, to, to forget one another. He may separate us into himself to impart in us. When God got through doing what he did with Abraham, he brought him back to the people. Amen. He will pull you over, Paul. He will put you behind the cliff. He will empower you. He will activate you. He will anoint you. But then he will send you back to his people with power and with authority. When Moses left uh, Pharaoh, when he slew the Egyptian, God pulled him to himself. He made him humble. He made him shepherd the sheep for, uh, for Jethro, his father-in-law. When he got through shepherding the sheep, when God broke his spirit because it was too hard, God pulled him from Israel. And he left Israel in Egypt for 40 years while God molded and shaped him. Then God told him, he said, now go back. Now you're ready. Now I'm qualified. You're now prepared. You're now I've got you ready to move in power and authority when I speak. See, people got it twisted, they got it confused in their mind, and these lying pastors are coming on TV, and I don't mind calling them lying because that's what they are. My God. Yeah, you, God. The Bible said that you should know them by the fruit that they bear. Yes, thank you, God. That's the word of God. Hallelujah. Woo. Thank you, Lord. He said you should know them by the power and the authority of the Holy Ghost. That would deceive the people of God. The Bible says if it wasn't for the coming of Christ, the very elect would be deceived. That's God's word. Thank you, Father. And I'm going to tell you, woe be unto me if I preach not the gospel. Amen. Woe be unto me if I tell you not the truth, whether you like it or not, I can care less. Amen. You don't pay my bills, Hallelujah. and you don't buy my meals. Amen. It's all done by God. Amen. My faith and trust is totally in him. Yes. I've learned to trust God unconditionally, yes, just like he loves me and you unconditionally. Yes. In other words, the Bible says, in all things give thanks, in all things give praise, in all things magnify, edify, and glorify God. Doesn't matter what, 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 what the enemy thinks. Until you make the devil mad, he won't repent. Until you make the enemy mad, they won't wake up. They'll, they'll continue to sleep. But you've got to let the people of God know when they're there. You've got to let them know when they've made an error. You've got to let them know when they've made a mistake. Amen. Somebody got to tell them they will be honest with them. Because folk are compromising now. They're, 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 they're in business. They're in ministry for money. Mm. Yes. Stop paying them their salary. They'll walk away from your ministry and go to one day and pay them a bigger salary. Mm -hmm. Higher service. God talked about them. Mm -hmm. He preached about them in the word. Jesus talks about the higher servant. Mm -hmm. That's why he said, my sheep and my voice, and they follow me. He talks about the higher servant. He said, the thief comes but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. A lot of people think he's talking about Satan. No, he's talking about the pastors in the pulpit. He's talking about those that pretend to be who they're not. That's who he's talking about. That's who he's talking about. Talking about the men of God and the women of God. That when they don't get the offering they expect, they get mad at the whole body of Christ. That's who he's talking about. The thief. The leader. The stand behind the pulpit. That's who Jesus is talking about in case you didn't know. He's talking about that man and that woman of God that decrees and declares the gospel until you don't do what they want you to do. Yes. That's the thief he's talking about. That's the robber he's talking about. Those that's playing church. Those that ain't real. Real people, the Bible says a righteous man will fall seven times, but the Bible says he will get up. Yes. Thank you, Father. It says he'll, he'll he confess his sin, he'll acknowledge his sin. But I said the righteous man. I didn't say somebody played in church. Amen. But I said a real vessel was surely man I fought and I fell by the wayside yes. and acknowledged and repented to the people of God and moved forward to the things Thank of the kingdom. Hallelujah. That's, what, well, that's what matters is that we get it right in the body of Christ yes. and stop condemning one another and stop ridiculing ungodly people. Amen. Stop finding fault with everybody Amen. and calling ourselves Christians. And people don't want to come to church today because the Christian folk are acting like the world. That's right. Amen. Because the Christian
Christian for life that ungodly and unholy. And then they want to say, I love Jesus. Do you know Jesus? Is the question. Because if you truly knew him, you wouldn't act that way. You'd get delivered. Yes. Had a woman of God tell me one time, I need to get delivered. I said, honey, you have no idea who you're talking to. <laughs> you never go up against your mentor. Right. You cuss your hand. Mm -hmm. Touch not the anointed. You can't go up against the man of God. You can't go up against the woman of God. It doesn't matter that there was no mistake they made. You cannot touch their garment. Amen. Amen. Remember, Amen. David slew the soldier that killed Saul. Amen. Because he touched the anointed. Mm -hmm. God said, touch not my anointed. Do my prophets no harm. Yes. God meant what he said when he said what he said. Yes, he and he'll hold you accountable until you repent. He will hold you accountable until you surrender. He'll beat your conscience until you give in. You won't sleep at night. You won't rest at night. And you won't unwind. He'll keep reminding you. You got to repent. You'll stand up for prophets and they'll prophesy to you and say, you got a woman of God. You got a man of God. You got to go back and get it right with. See, God will hold you accountable. Many believers want God, but they don't want to be accountable. I'm trying to preach this word. God blessed him. He favored him. Not only that, I'm only going to get through two verses because we got to end this. He says, and increased him. See? See? Abraham was wealthy, but God gave him more. Then God increased even that. See, when you are lining up with the will of God, God will bless you. He will give you more. Then he'll increase you. He'll make, the Bible says, God says, I'll make your name great. Because people will scandalize your name. People will try to destroy your name. They'll tell this one and this one and tell that one and that one and tell that one and that one and tell that one and that one and tell that one. They'll tell it and then they'll hear the, they'll add to it. And it's just like in classroom, the teacher say one word, teacher might say money, and by the time that he gives it to the last person in the classroom, it's Holy Ghost fire. <laughs> teacher say, I said one word, and now it's Holy Ghost fire. Well, I need that too. <laughs> See? It's important you realize and understand what God's doing right now, he's not judging the people. Amen. We're judging one another. Mm -hmm. We're destroying one another okay. in the so-called name of God. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. You got the love unconditionally. Right, right. You want power, you want authority, you got the love unconditionally. Yes. You want to move in the right way, you got the love unconditionally. Mm -hmm. You got to walk in faith. People look at your life every day and they see full flaws and calls and then they say, I can't, I can't walk behind this person because they one way at church and another way and, and another way on the job. No, 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 no. No, we ought to be holy sun up to sundown. Seven days a week. We got to be righteous. We got to be holy. We got to live for God. Whether we understand or not, it doesn't matter. The Bible says, lean not to thou understand. Well, let me say it right. Trust in the Lord. With all thine heart, lean not to thy own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Yes. God will do it. So you see sin, so you see iniquity, trust God. Amen. So you see ungodliness, you see unholiness, trust God. Because that's what God's going to do. God's going to bring order eventually. He's going to line everything up eventually. Amen. We just got to trust him. He increased Abraham. God could increase Abraham because Abraham obeyed the voice of God. God will increase you when you obey his voice. He will expand you when you obey his voice. He will multiply when you, you, when you obey his voice. And until then, you'll be waiting. It's not going to be your way. That's why thy kingdom come. That's why thy will be done. In me, earth, as it is in heaven. Because we can't do it our way. It's not like Burger King. You can't have it your way. you got to do it God's way. Because God's way is the only way. That's why he said, heaven and earth will pass away. But my word shall stand. I was going to stop and I hear the Lord saying do this because he, he wants to talk to the church at this moment. He says, for the Lord, verse, verse number three, he says, for the Lord shall comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places. Stopping right there. Places. See, God is the one that comforts you in your hurting moment. God is the one that comforts you when you're going through a trial or a tribulation. 
You pick up your phone to call somebody and they'll see the phone ring and they won't even answer. The Lord, I don't feel like being bothered with that spirit. It vexes my spirit every time it calls. But you ask God for people, the saints. You ask God for, for, for saints in the church. You ask God for people to, to pray for. You ask God for people to, to grow your ministry. Amen. But when a saint calls, you don't want to talk to them. Oh, I hate to see them coming, but you ask God to give you some saints. Oh, Jesus. Well, do you want saints or do you, do you do you not want saints? You can't ask God for one. Because see, God ain't going to give you what you want. He's going to give you what he wants you to have. Because see, before you can get the abundance, you got to be proven. Oh. See, if, if everybody walked out of the church and ain't nobody here but me, I still got to preach on Sunday. Amen. And I preach many Sundays with this coronavirus standing right in this pulpit in here by myself. Amen. Why? Because we got to obey the laws of God. So you got to stand regardless. Amen. So you remember, Jesus only had 12. Amen. The people can talk about your ministry all they want, but that don't mean God ain't going to advance you. Amen. And then they're going to be like, oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. I remember when they had two members. Uh -huh. Amen. <laughs> That's the God we serve. Amen. He'll blow your mind. Like, wow, how, 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 how did that happen? Because it's called a relationship with Christ. It's called a relationship with God. It's called really fellowshipping with him. It's called keeping your faith and trust in him. See, God says, I'll cover Zion, Israel, Ju Ju Judah, Jerusalem. I'll comfort Zion, my church, my bride. He said, I'll heal you. I'll deliver you. I'll set you free. I'll make sure that the adversary is not able to attack you. He said, in other words, I'll comfort you in spite of what it looks like. I'll comfort you in spite of what's going on in your life. Trust me. Don't worry about it. Guess what? I was in control before you ever got to this date. I can tell you today what's going to happen 20 years from the day in your life. Hey, you might not even be promised 20 years, but God knows your future. Amen. You worried about a little 10-minute thing. I was sitting down there that I think, and I said, I was thinking about, I was thinking about Donald Trump. I said, Lord, Donald Trump got oh millions of dollars. Millions and millions. I said, well, Lord have mercy. I can just imagine the stress that's on this man with all the lawsuits that's coming at him. And we as born again believers, we can't even trust God to give us two thousand dollars to pay a bill. And that ain't even no stress compared to what this man is under. Amen. I'm just speaking in general. Amen. The mindset of people. They have little faith in God and a lot of faith in people who lie. Mm. And then they say they trust in God. I'm going to tell it like it is whether you like it or not. Amen. Won't be up to me if I tell you not the truth. Amen. But I'm here to tell you some of these folk you trust is about to let you down. Mm. And it ain't going to be because they want to. It's going to be because God's doing it. Because wow. he's going to teach you a lesson you never will forget. And that you can take to the bank. He's going to teach you a lesson you never will forget. And that is to keep your faith and your trust and your confidence totally in me. Because I see the Lord changing the heart of people. And they want to walk away from you just like that. And you're going to want to know what happened. God said, I'll change their mind and I'll change their heart. Some of them, he's going to even get rid of their mind, minds because they won't serve him. They're to and fro. They're like the wind. They're back and forth. They all of a sudden change. And I don't understand why. Lean not. Lean not. Uh, lean not. Lean, lean, lean not. To your own understanding. But in all your ways, acknowledge Him, Jesus Christ. Him, the Holy Spirit. Him, the Heavenly Father. And he will direct your path. Let us pray. Now, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we give you glory, honor, and praise. Father, we thank you now for this word today. We ask you, Father, take this word, plant it in the hearts and the minds of everyone under the sound of my voice. Father, when we fail to understand your word, we repent even now. And we ask your grace and your mercy and your forgiveness. Father, we ask you to take this word now and activate it. Let the Holy Spirit begin to rest upon us now. Pour your spirit and activate this word in our hearts that we're to draw to you and we're to seek your face and we're to listen to your voice. We ask it in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Now, Father, seal this word. Every crevice, every crack, seed, root, and fruit. 
seal it down, even until the day of redemption. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everyone say, Amen. Amen. And God gets all the glory. Now, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the Bible says in Romans 10 and 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Verse 10 says, with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So if you don't know Jesus Christ, this is the hour of the opportunity for you to accept him, excuse me, as your Lord and Savior. Just say, Father, I'm a sinner. So I confess my sins and my iniquities. Say, I, 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 I repent even now in Jesus' mighty name. Say, Father, your word says that Jesus died and rose for my sins and for the sins of the world. Amen. Say, and I confess that Jesus Christ is your son. And Father, today I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you just pray that prayer, you just accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of your life. And I say so many times, the angels of heaven are rejoicing for another soul that is in the presence and the glories of our Lord. And I say unto you now, begin to read the word of God and get into a Bible-believing church. But when you begin to read the word of God, I always say this and I'm going to say it again. Read the four books of the gospel, Matthew, Luke, Mark, and John. These four books of the gospel will give you an understanding of who you are as a born-again believer. And why Jesus died and rose for the sins of the world. And why we serve him as Christian believers as our Lord and our Savior. Amen. So God bless you, you. And especially we want to take this time to thank you so much today for being on these live streams, wherever you are. If you watch me by recording or if, you, if you're looking at the video, wherever you may be. We thank you so much for being on these live streams. We give God the glory, the honor, and the praise for you. And until the next time, God bless you, 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 and especially you. Help me just a moment here, so I mess with my computer here. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Amen. I get all the glory, all the honor, all the praise.